Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and today I bring you a very special edition of Behind the Scenes. I want to talk about some, not all, of the art resources and online teachers and YouTubers and the likes that have been a huge inspiration to me over the years and share that with you. It's amazing how often I mention these YouTubers or these resources to my students and they've never even heard of them. So I thought it would be an awesome idea to just share these with you right away, just here on my YouTube channel, let you know which artists I follow. Now, like I said, this is not by any stretch of the imagination, anything close to an exhaustive list of artists. I just want to name a handful of them, a pretty big handful, but a handful nonetheless. But I know a lot of you are going to sound out in the comments below and say, but you forgot about this one, and what about this one, and these guys are awesome. I know you're going to share a lot of them with me, which you always do, right? So this is what I considered a part one of a two-part series because the first part's just me sounding out a few names and the second one's going to be based on all of your suggestions online and I'm going to go and research all of them so just let it rip let me know which ones you like and I'll make a follow-up video to this one based on that all right so with that said there's a few different things I want to cover not only a artists and online teachers that I absolutely love but why I love them what is it that makes them so awesome to me so the first artist as you've seen on my screen this whole time is Marco Bucci and I found out not too long ago that he's actually a fellow Canadian. And one of the reasons why he's the first on my list is because he's not only an incredible artist, but he's also an incredible teacher. And I've had a chance to speak with him personally, and I know for a fact that he's actually a teacher in schools as well. I know he has a lot of online resources for learning as well. But when you watch his YouTube videos, one of the things that really, really sticks out to me is when he teaches, you learn. You, he really knows how to drive information home. He started a new series called 10 Minutes to Better Painting. And holy smokes, it's worth, every word he says is worth its weight in gold, in my personal opinion. Every month, once a month, he comes out with a new video and he covers different topics such as color theory or merging shapes or, you know, you can see them all here, visual language, that kind of stuff. They're absolutely incredible. And when you go on it, you'll see it for yourself. If you have not yet discovered Marco Bucci, I very strongly recommend you do. And the other cool thing about him is, and I don't think, I don't know if anybody's ever told him before, he has an amazing recording voice. So even if you're not necessarily watching him, you're just listening to him, he's got a very, he's got a very pleasant voice to listen to in the background while you paint, which is I know a lot of us do, right? We paint and we're listening to YouTube videos at the same time, just as inspiration and company, so to speak. So definitely go check this out. The second one, of course, is my dear friend, Tyler Edlin. I actually was the one who reached out to him uh, just to see if there was anything he was interested in collaborating on. And as you know, of course, he ended up inviting me to do Brush Sauce Theatre with him, which is the monthly competition. All the information is going to be below. And it's been an absolute blast, a huge community that just kept on growing. So you know our history if you follow my channel at all. There's something about the way he communicates art that just helps me understand it better. Whether he's just talking about his process or talking about the time it takes him to do things, whether he's just talking about what's going on in his head, something about that really helps me focus. And that's one of the reasons why I watch his videos all the time. And as you know, if you follow his channel, he puts out a ton of content. He's always putting out new videos. He's an absolute obsessive and probably one of the most painfully productive artists I've ever known. I thought, well, once he had his little girl, he would, he would taper off and he, he would start slowing down. No, <laughs> he's still a full-time dad. He still posts pictures of him and his little pumpkin all the time online, and he still produces a ridiculous amount of work. So I don't know how he does it, but if you want to find out, I definitely recommend you go and check it out. Now I have a very funny story about the next artist on my list. And uh, this is an artist who I've had a huge amount of respect for and had a bit of an online friendship going on with over the last few years, we had a, there was a lot of mutual respect between us, but we never actually met in person until yesterday. <laughs> I had been vlogging with my daughter all day and we were walking out of a restaurant after our lunch and I held the door for somebody walking in and I immediately recognized her face and I looked at her and I said, is your name Samantha by any chance? And she turned around and she recognized me too and she went, oh my God, Adam! And we had this big hug as if we'd been friends for 25 years. It was a really cool experience. And uh, I happened to have my vlogging camera with me in my hand, all set up and ready to go. 
So I was super excited. I went, oh my God, this is incredible opportunity. So I decided to turn on my camera and I turned it on us and I had this big excited pitch and I couldn't wait to get home and I uploaded the footage and I never turned on my microphone. With that said, who am I talking about? Who is this mysterious Samantha? Well, I'm talking about none other than Samantha Youssef, the Disney director, the incredibly talented artist, who isn't only one of my personal artistic heroes for as long as I can remember, but also an incredibly accomplished teacher. And up until not that long ago, she had a school here in Montreal called Studio Technique, an actual brick and mortar school, but she has since taken this school online. I am taking her course as soon as I have the time. One of the things that really connects me to her, her particular style, her particular approach, is the fact that she's not only an animation artist, but she's also a dancer. So a lot of her models and her techniques and her knowledge of the body comes from a knowledge of dance, which I am as well. Not by any stretch of the imagination as trained as her, but I am an, a dancer as well. So the fact that she has this combined knowledge makes her such an incredibly valuable teacher, not only artistically, but technically. Her knowledge of the body, of anatomy, of movement, of gesture and pose and weight, and you name it, all tied into classical animation, which was my original area of study. I have a degree in classical animation, so wow. You can't go wrong with her, and if you have two cents and two seconds, spend it on her in her course, because she's just incredible. And just to throw it out there, it was such an honor to meet you yesterday. With that said, the next artist on my list is somebody who I absolutely love to listen to. <laughs> he's been around on YouTube for as long as I can remember. And I mean, he's got, I mean, as far as content is concerned, if you're looking for some inspiring learning material, look nowhere else but Cynic's design. And one of the reasons I love listening to him is because he has this voice that makes you smile. You listen to his voices. Hi, it's Cynics. It's so awesome to see you and to hear your voices and to see your, pretty, your awesome faces. We're going to do some painting today. I love listening to him. You, he, is, he sounds like a smile, okay? But I'm not just recommending him for that. I'm recommending him because he has a very unique way of tackling otherwise very complicated subjects, such as how to draw feet, how to draw certain muscles, how to draw noses, how to draw hands. He has these ways of approaching a subject that can take otherwise very complex information and simplify it. And when you see his artwork, you can see that the quality of, of his work is a reflection of what it is that he's teaching. So he's not somebody that's just good at doing, but not good at showing. He's amazing. He's amazing at explaining things in a way that really help it sink in. As well, I love his approach to creativity. He takes a lot of time when he's doing his warm-ups to just kind of mess around and try crazy things, which is something that I've learned over the years is probably one of the most valuable ways to come up with creative ideas. It's to not work in a very tight, rigid, methodical way, but just to allow your creative ideas to flow. So I often find myself listening to him when I find myself getting a little bit stale and tight in my particular approach to artwork. Or I'm having a hard time generating ideas. I listen to him for an hour or two, and I find that it really breaks the ice for me and just helps me get my own funky flow going. You know what I'm saying? Now to switch things up a little bit, we've been looking at a lot of animation and concept artists and stuff like that. I want to bring you to the world of fine arts for a moment because there's a channel I discovered maybe a year and a half, two years ago, hosted by an artist named Mark Carter, a traditional fine artist. Although he teaches a lot of fine art painting techniques and traditional painting techniques, how to mix paint, how to use a color picker, that kind of thing. What he teaches artistically and technically in most cases, applies to all of us across the board. How he approaches colors, how he approaches lighting, exposure, all of these different things. He also has a lot of art talks, very similar to what I have, where he talks about different things, he does a lot of Q and A's, he answers a lot of community questions and stuff like that. And his feedback and his knowledge, and furthermore, his methodology behind learning is something that really, really resonates with me. I find that I very much share his particular point of views when it comes to teaching. For instance, quality, over quantity, that type of idea. He's one of those teachers, for instance, that advocates by learning by producing your next masterpiece rather than just pumping out 500 images and hoping for some kind of growth out of that. So I find that listening to him also reinforces my own beliefs artistically as a teacher as well. And I absolutely love the way he teaches. So you definitely want to be subscribed to this channel as well. Now, the next artist that I've got here probably doesn't need much of an introduction. If you've been in the industry for, for any length of time, you'll know, you'll know who Anthony Jones is. 
And um, one of the reasons why I'm recommending him, although he doesn't really need much publicity, is not only because of his particular skill, he's an amazing artist and very inspiring to watch artistically, but because he's an artist you can watch and grow from. What he teaches and how he teaches is in a very down-to-earth way that you can pick up on. And not only on his channel in particular, but I really recommend you going to check out his gumroads. They're like three bucks a pop. Puts out new gumroads all the time. And although you're not necessarily going to be transformed with every single thing that comes out of his mouth, because he's got a very relaxed approach to teaching, I find that most of his gumroads, he's got these little gems of advice that are incredibly transformative. If you don't know him already, definitely go check him out. It's definitely worth it. Now the next in our list is Ahmed Alduri, another artist who I absolutely love listening to, just like Cynics. And one of the reasons why is because he doesn't edit himself at all. <laughs> I was watching some of his videos and you know, he's sitting there and he's got kind of like, yeah, right, um, sure, all right, we'll do this and uh, yeah, okay. You know, not me, I edit the crap out of my stuff. I'm always cutting this out and you can, you can tell just by watching this that I've probably made about 600 edits to this video alone. But I remember one video in particular where his buddy calls him on the phone and he just answers his phone, yeah, what's up? Yeah, no, I'm just recording a YouTube video. Sure, yeah, you wanna hook up later? Okay, all right, bye. I'll probably edit this out after. He never did. He just kind of hit published and out it went. <laughs> Which is so much fun to listen to because he's just got such a relaxed attitude to producing YouTube videos in general. But that's not the only reason why I'm recommending him. He's, I also love his particular approach to teaching and to communicating art. He's another artist that I've watched a lot of videos from and really learned a lot from. He's somebody who has a way of breaking down the process and very often uses the techniques of classical painters such as Sargent and Repin and so on and so forth. He's found a way to bridge the gap between classical painters and concept artists of today in a very, very straightforward way that I really love. He has a great way of communicating things. He's somebody that I cannot recommend enough. So definitely go check out Ahmed Alduri. Now, another artist I've been following for as long as I can remember, and one of the artists that I feel has had one of the most profound impacts on me artistically, just in terms of how his presence has influenced me and how his communication skills have influenced me, and that's Darkin, also known as Mike Lim. And if this is the first time you're hearing the name Darkin, it's Darkin with two A's, so D-A-A-R-K-E-N. Darkin is the artist that I would compare to a certain degree to Tyler, Tyler Edlin. Just in terms of his form of communication, he has a way of demystifying the otherwise very intimidating process of producing fantasy art and concept art because he presents himself as being a very organic, trial and error type of artist. He tries this, he doesn't like it, he admits when he's weak at doing this, he sucks at doing that, he, he couldn't figure out how to do this hand properly, so he gets an image reference and he goes and he grabs it and he feels he needs to do this more, and he's taking you through this very personal, candid explanation of what he does. And I find that is probably what I have benefited from the most listening to him. When you're somebody who's new to fantasy art and illustration, if you're somebody who hasn't done a lot of digital painting like this, when you first encounter it, you look at these artists' work, you look at these polished, beautiful, rendered, detailed pieces, and it's incredibly intimidating. But listening to a guy like Darkin, seeing what he can accomplish artistically, but then understanding that whole lengthy process completely makes it accessible to you and I as artists. Not only that, but he also has a site called enlighten.com with two I's. Darken with two A's, enlighten with two I's. And you can find a lot of his tutorials here and then some. There's a lot of tutorials that you'll find here that you can't find on YouTube. Also, when you go on his site, you'll notice that he has a mentorship as well. And many of my students that have graduated from my mentorship have also taken his as well and absolutely love him. He's incredibly trained, incredibly direct. He has an incredible gift at communicating art. Definitely recommend this guy. I recommend his mentorship and I recommend his YouTube channel. Subscribe, follow, love, all of that. He definitely deserves all of it. Now, the next artist on my list is Noah Bradley, who also might not need much of an introduction. He's a very well-known artist in the industry. I originally discovered him way back when he put out his guide to freelancing online. And I remember looking at the picture and going, I don't know a lot of artists that wear a tuxedo. <laughs> I was like, that's a very dapper looking guy for an artist. Usually we're all in our frocks and smocks and all kinds of, we're not, we're not the most presentable people professionally, at least not in the whole corporate sense of the word. But wow, when I Listen to that for the first time. I wasn't yet an independent artist at that point. Boy, was it valuable. And it also made me immediately fall in love with his teaching style, with his communication style. And shortly thereafter, after following him on Facebook and all of his content on YouTube, realized, 
holy shit, he's probably one of the most generous people I know in the industry. Not only with his advice, but you know, with his online lessons on his YouTube channel. And, and I remember following on Facebook once, he, he went to the Grand Canyon. He took at least 20 or 30 gig worth of high resolution image references that he had just shots he took at the Grand Canyon and just took them all, stuck them on a folder and posted them online and said, there you go, free download for everybody. And he did that a few times with different trips he's taken. He's basically taken his experiences were traveling around the world and he shared it with everybody for free. I mean, wow, thank you for that. That's incredible. He goes to great lengths and effort to provide the online community with so much value. I can't praise him enough. Not only that, but he also has an online school, you may or may not have known this, called Noah Bradley's Art Camp, as far as I know. And all I can say is he's probably one of the best teachers I know. He put out, he's put out videos, for instance, the one we have right here called Master Studies. It's had over 341,000 views, which surprises me. I expected to be quintuple that. But that video alone will transform you artistically. Just watch it. Just watch it and, and practice what he shows. You will grow as an artist like that. He's one of the most valuable people you'll ever be able to follow in the industry. So go check it out right away. Now, the next artist on my list is a self-proclaimed former Disney artist who quit to start his own thing called the Oatly Art Academy. And um, he's got his YouTube channel. He puts out podcasts regularly. And he is probably one of the most enjoyable people to listen to, by far. And I put him in the same category as actually one of my favorite podcasts online called Under the Influence with Terry O'Reilly. If you're not familiar with him, go check him out. He's, he's this guy who talks about the history of marketing and advertising and stuff like that. I absolutely love it. I'm addicted to that show. Well, Chris Oatley falls into that category with me because he has an incredibly unique perspective on different subjects. He knows how to take a subject from an angle that makes it far more comprehensive to people. He knows how to refresh your perspective on facets of career and artistic pursuit and artistic processes that make it far more accessible. He has an incredibly unique and brilliant vision and his ability to communicate that to his audience is incomparable. I don't know anybody else online who's capable of executing that with the same level of finesse, as far as I know. He's absolutely fantastic. He's also got an online school, the Oatly Academy, and Kindred Spirit as well. He's a classical animator as well. So a lot, so his particular style is very classical animation based. You can tell by looking at his art, it speaks for itself. But he's very successfully crossed the bridge between animation and fantasy art as well. Definitely go check this guy out. Now the next artist on my list is from Cube Brush or Brush Boost. And I'm talking about Marc Brunet. Now, he, this is what I love about his channel. He doesn't only have a ton of amazing content, but he's got a lot of tricks of the trade. He's an unapologetic digital painter who's a very digitally experimental artist. He knows how to integrate 3D and 2D and After Effects and all these different cool tricks and shortcuts to help you boost your efficiency. Different types of plugins. He's always experimenting with this, this type of stuff. And so many valuable, cool tips. And he also puts out a ton of incredibly valuable content. Another artist that I feel isn't only really good at what he does, but he's also really good at teaching and communicating it as well. So I can't by any stretch of the imagination recommend him enough. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe. Your YouTube feed's gonna be dinging every five seconds <laughs> when he puts up new stuff. So definitely go and check him out. Now I'm gonna make a quick mention of this next YouTube channel called China Digital Painting. And the reason I'm making quick is not because it's not valuable. In fact, when you look through this art and you watch these painting processes, you're going to be blown away at just how amazingly good these artists are. And an amazing mix between fantasy art and animation and anime and classical painting, all of these different things mixed together to make absolutely exquisitely beautiful art. It's a variety of different artists. There are tutorials that you can find on this channel but a lot of it's just watching painting, random audio going on in the background. Sometimes they're speaking in Chinese. So unless you speak Chinese, you won't necessarily understand what they're saying. But just watching the painting process is absolutely a joy. I absolutely love watching them. Now for what few actual tutorials they might have, they are exquisite. For instance, I remember seeing one a while back on uh, coloring a black and white image. It's a coloring a, a Chun-Li painting. Just a few little quick tips and tricks on how to color a black and white image. It's a technique that I use religiously to this day. It, it immediately became a part of my painting process. 
So if it's only to just go and ooh and awe ah, these amazing, amazingly skilled artists, then go have fun. But you will definitely find value. You'll definitely find some tutorials and learn something from their actual painting process as well. So go and check them out. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that on my monitor over here, I have an artist's artwork. That's not my own. This art actually belongs to Keenan Lafferty. And I didn't even know it was done by Keenan Lafferty. I was online looking for ultra-wide fantasy art wallpaper for my monitor when I bought it. And I discovered that work and I totally fell in love with it. I think nothing complements my ultra-wide gaming monitor there than Keenan's work. And then, sure enough, somebody who had seen it in one of my art talks said, Hey, you've got Keenan's work. And I said, Keenan? Who's Keenan? <laughs> Keenan Lafferty, he's got a YouTube channel. And I realized that there was an entire making of this masterpiece behind me that I'm so in love with. So, this is Keenan Lafferty. Now, there's uh, several reasons why I love this guy's channel. Number one is, he's not only really good at art, he doesn't only have a ton of content, he isn't only an amazing artist and teaches and is incredibly generous with his knowledge, but he's fun to listen to. He's very entertaining. He's a fun guy. He's got a lot of energy. I don't know how he keeps it up all the time, but holy smokes, he's so much fun to watch. I love listening to him even when I'm not even watching what he's doing. I just love having him in the background when I feel like getting a boost of inspiration and energy. He's absolutely magical. So definitely go and check out his channel. Now the next artist I want to mention here and the site I want to mention here is probably the number one resource for free online learning of digital painting. And the production value of what he produces, he being Matt Core, um, the production value of what he produces is second to none. I mean, the, the, the time and effort that he puts into these absolutely beautiful presentations of his pieces, the graphic design that goes behind it, the timing, the audio, everything is just incredible quality. The organizational skill of this incredibly huge library of art on his channel, is mind-boggling and it's all free go and check it out he's got some tutorials he's got on the side and stuff like that that you can pay for that are absolutely fantastic i don't care what level artist you are whether you're somebody who's brand new or somebody who's been doing this for the last 50 years there is so much content such a wide variety of everything being quality content on his channel that you will learn something you will grow you will go somewhere and there's just an endless well of it so if you're somebody who's looking for an absolutely incredible exquisite online resource for learning mostly free stuff controlpaint.com go check it out absolutely fantastic now the last but definitely not the least artist on my list is bobby chu and his wife kea sedera who run multiple different things. Uh -huh. I don't even think this guy sleeps to be completely honest with you. Now the last, but definitely not the least on my list is none other than Bobby Chu and his wife, Kea Sidera. Now, I don't know if this guy sleeps, but he's got the true stream. He's got sketch, he used to have Sketchaholic. I don't think he's got that anymore. He does professional artist interviews. He runs the Schoolism Workshop. He does in-house workshops in Toronto fellow Canadian, hell yeah. And I haven't even mentioned the fact that he works as a concept artist for directors like Tim Burton, for instance. And he's an author. <laughs> I don't know what's in his wheatgrass, but holy smokes, give me some of that. You know what I'm saying? He's absolutely incredible. And not only that, but one of the most generous and humble artists I've ever met. Very luckily to me, when they host the Schoolism workshops in Montreal, they usually host them at the Siege of Old Montreal, which is where I teach. I'll definitely take whatever perk I can get when it comes to that kind of stuff, but but that's the thing. So I've had a chance to meet him on several occasions. I've been to several of his workshops here in Montreal. And okay, I'll put it to you this way. I've worked as a director for big studios where they had big budgets and they could send me to places that had thousand dollar tickets. And I've, you know, red carpet event, the whole shebang, really formal stuff where we got to meet and shake the hands of some of the industry top special effects artists for Transformers and da 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 and all this kind of stuff. I walked out of there completely empty. I walked out of there, I realized that all it was was a thousand dollar ticket to walk into these different workshops and hear people talk about how fortunate they are. Completely no value to me as somebody who's looking to learn. There isn't a shadow of doubt I'm not making up a damn thing here. I'm not promoted or paid to say any of this stuff. In both occasions when I went to the Schoolism workshop it was so exciting and inspiring and informative and stimulating that I couldn't wait for it to end so I could run home and paint. 
What I learned there, the energy, the knowledge, what they share during these workshops is absolutely phenomenal. And it's funny, even workshops that I thought might be boring, because I didn't know much about it, like storyboarding, for instance, ended up being some of my favorite ones. Because as I learned, storyboard artists are the best storytellers and usually the most theatrical. But I got to meet and chat with artists like Carla Ortiz and Lu Louis Gonzalez and Luc de Marchelier. I mean, it's mind boggling. It's almost too much. At the end of an entire weekend at the Schoolism Workshop, your brain is sore, your ass is sore. They put you through the works that we can bet. I can't see any greater value for your time and money than going to see these workshops. I can't see any better time and value to schoolism, to the Chu stream, to all of the things that Bobby Chu gets behind. And one of the main reasons for it is because he's an artist who struggled to make it where he did. And in the process of getting where he did, took note of every single hardship he went through and developed his educational material around that. So he's not coming from somebody who was handed a silver spoon and just made it big and he was a lucky guy to be at the right place at the right time. He's failed and tried and failed and tried and then succeeded and succeeded hugely and took every ounce of success and didn't only pioneer an incredible artistic career, but an incredible sense of business savvy. And he shares all of that. There it is, all right? So hopefully I haven't exhausted you with all of these different amazing YouTubers. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing a follow-up one to this, but I need you for that. So any artist you can think of that inspires you, let us all know in the comments below, and I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this one, sharing with you all of the research I've done based on your feedback. And of course, don't forget about the Brush Sauce Theater Art Contest with myself and Tyler Edlin, he who I went at great lengths praising today. And of course, my private online art mentorship, Lucid Pixel. You can go and check out all the information below, as well as a name and a link to every single artist that I mentioned today. You can go check it out, subscribe to all of these channels, take these courses, expand your mind. I cannot recommend any of these, ladies and gentlemen, enough. All right, so happy painting, and I will see you soon. Take care.